Welcome to Pin the Q Productions. If you are interested in the culture of the fire service and keeping tradition alive, you have come to the right place. Now sit back and relax with your brothers and sisters and enjoy the show. Be sure to like and subscribe on all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. For more information on Pin the Q Productions, visit www.pintheq.com. Everyone, welcome back to Pindicu Podcast, episode number 35. Here with a guy who absolutely needs no introduction whatsoever, but we're going to do it anyway. Captain Eckert from Eckert Fire Tactics, but also he's a captain in Camden, uh, the great city of Camden. So anybody who knows that place knows what that, that town's about and uh, the type of fire they get in the, in the work. So I'm sure that that has a lot to do with your uh, experience that you can bring to the table. It's not just a company and a logo. It's, it's experience that goes behind it. So... Cap, welcome to the show. Finally, finally, thanks finally. for having me. Wow, uh, I appreciate it. Been trying to do this for a couple couple times, you know. Yeah, we've been <laughs> definitely well over a year, so yeah, good. Maybe even longer. Welcome to the show, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate being here, and it's uh, it's cool to see you know how everything you got invested into this. So it, it is a, it definitely is an investment. The first thing I want to say to you is uh, I think that this couldn't have been a better setup for for your interview. Yeah, you we know, picked a good day. I mean, we took a we took a gamble with the weather, but yeah. yeah. But obviously, with everything going on with the COVID, you know, uh, it's affected so many things. And and, uh, and the one thing was, we weren't going to let that stop this. No, not at all. So, so, so yeah. welcome to the show, bro. And, and uh, looking forward to getting into this. Thanks, man. The good thing is, a lot of people reached out and were like, when's that show getting dropped? When's that show getting dropped? I mean, I'm, you, you saw it too, I'm sure. I, feel, I had a few texts about it. I think some people thought it was live. I yeah. didn't, you know, but. Well, maybe Ray, that's up to Ray if he wants to uh, want to go live or not, but we'll we'll Maybe cross that bridge. Sure. But in the meantime, again, welcome to the show. We're going to talk about some for, some stuff. The first thing I want to talk about, though, uh, and this is pretty much how I start all the shows. Um, how'd this whole start for Bobby Eckert? I mean... Uh, well, uh, in the fire service? I'm talking about the fire service. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about... Everything. The so, fire uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm a second generation fireman. You guys met my parents earlier. Uh, we're in my backyard. People don't <laughs> know that already. Um... Yeah, so my dad was a fireman. He was uh, uh, in the town I grew up in, Collingswood. He was the, uh, they had a career staff. He was the, uh, uh, when I was born, he was the career captain. And, uh, you know, later on he became the chief of department. So, you know, I had that influence. But, you know, it kind of didn't really um, resonate with me, maybe as an extremely young child. I, you know, it, it, it's kind of funny because my fire service thing started more through my mom with antique and I would buy <laughs> bought a couple of fire helmets, you know, because my dad was a fireman. That's and, awesome. You know, it, it kind of started that way. And I, But the funny thing is, when I was a kid, I thought everybody's dad was a fireman. I didn't know, I had no idea. So, um, yeah, and, you know, the bug bit me at an early age, and I kind of knew it was something I'd probably do, and, you know, I, I kind of got into it, and, uh, you know, I, I always was drawn to the city of Camden. Collingswood is right next to Camden. My mom uh, worked for the Camden County Sheriff's Department, so... We would pick her up sometimes to work, and I would see Camden had a slime green fire trucks, and I never saw a slime green fire truck before, and I was like, that looks pretty damn cool, that fire truck. So, um, you know, I spent a lot of time as a child riding my bike into Camden and buffing fires, and um, I just knew from seeing fires that I wanted to go to as many fires as possible and be at, at fires, and that's kind of how it started for me, and uh, Collingswood started a fire explorer 
uh, post through the Boy Scouts of America. Oh, yeah. When I was 14, I was a charter member of that. And, um, I mean, that was it. I, I, I started at 14, and it was a... It was definitely a way to keep you out of trouble because, you know, you had to maintain a C average in school and yeah. things of that nature. But, it, you know, it, it definitely got me early. And, uh, you know, I, I had kind of haven't looked back. It's just it's something that I uh, it, it, it's I mean, it's basically who I am. And, you know, uh, here I am. So, I, you know, I, I was in Collingswood uh, until uh, 2006. And I left to uh, for the city of Camden. And uh, I'm still a member of the fire company. Unfortunately, um the fire company doesn't have many active members, but they still have a, a you know, charter they hold. And uh, I'm still a member of that with my father. My dad's a life member. And, uh, you know, that always, cons would always be near and dear to my heart. And uh, what, One of the things I respect so much about you is that you you remember your roots. Yeah, and you, you're humble and you remember your, your beginnings. And you talk about Collingswood a lot. Well, I wasn't always humble. That's You know, I, I was I was that punk kid with a big mouth. And, you know, uh, well, I still got a big mouth. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's... Uh, Sometimes it takes people to put you in your place to, for you to realize that you do you, you need to, you know, I, I got served a whole pie of humble pie and I needed it, at, you know, at a young age. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's where I'm from. I'll never forget that. And I'm very proud of it. Very, very proud of it. As you should be. And I, and I think that's good that you, you talk about it quite a bit because I think it's good for other guys to see that, you know. Um, one of the things I talk about quite a bit on the show is that I feel like what we're losing in the fire service is that tradition, that culture, the respect – guys like your dad you know these these cats were doing this for forever before we were even thinking about it yeah and to not remember that and to go back and and talk to these guys and get their info like say hey what was it like back then you know um i'd see over the years you know young guys come to the firehouse they're not doing that they're not grabbing those senior guys and asking questions it's it's definitely important um you know I, i'm a I'm a huge history buff, and I just I try to absorb as much information as possible. And I always had a lot of weird questions, so you know my weird questions were always kind of directed towards the older guys because they were the only ones that could really answer them. Because I would want to know why that worked that way, but why did we do it that way, and what did we do before that way, and things of that nature. So, you know, my poor father, when I was probably between 10 and 20, <laughs> the questions I asked him, he probably you know was driving him nuts, but. I just had to know, I, right. you know, it was stuff that kept me up at night, you know, sitting there thinking this, that, and the other. Well, so. I think it's, it's obvious to say that passion was, it grew very, very early for you. Yeah, it's, you it's know? definitely something I'm still, you know, I, I can't picture being any other way or doing anything else. So I have no idea, you know, if I could ever lose it, but it's definitely there. And, you know, sometimes it's got to be reeled in. Sometimes it, it's, you know, it doesn't. So, Bro, take me back to... You know, you're on the volunteer fire department camp in uh, Collingswood, right? Yeah. Tell me what that was like for you when you first finally got the nod. You're like, okay, you can be a firefighter. What was that like for you? It was pretty cool. I was in high school still. So, you know, that was, um, <laughs> you, you know, it, it was definitely interesting because, you know, you, you, Collingswood have, ha, has career staff, and they have since 1927. So, you know, you kind of got to be at the firehouse to, to roll with the career staff. Um, yeah. And, you know, you could when I was around. So, you know, I spent a lot of time at that firehouse. Um, even as a, as a fire explorer, you know, I feel like I, I slept there every weekend I possibly could because I just didn't want to miss anything. I wanted to soak up as much of it as I possibly could. You know, you don't want to – and guys, you don't want to miss the fire, and especially yeah. a young guy. Um, but, no, it was cool. You know, I, I can remember my first fire, and it was um, – I actually got a text from a guy who was working at 911 call taker. Um, he's not there anymore, so I guess I get to the story. But, he, you know, he texts well, – it wasn't a text. I'm sorry. It was a next tell. Yeah. Beep, beep. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I heard the cop tones because they dropped to the cops before, so I had to jump on, you know, I was at the firehouse pretty early, but the career staff rig was gone, and, uh, you know, it was a, um, a second-floor bedroom fire on, on a big uh, balloon frame, and it extended up to the attic, and I got to go up there, and it was just, um, it was awesome. It was everything that, you know, I thought it would be more, and, right. you know, the, that uh, it's, it's it, a couple of those fires, them early on fires, you know, stick with you throughout your career because, it's just the feeling, the feeling that you had. It was like a gratification. Like if I could bottle that feeling up and sell oh it, I'd God. be a millionaire. You know what I mean? But it, it's, it's one of the things where I say it all the time. It's so funny. <laughs> but it's it's one of the things where yeah. you know you, you all that training and all that because you know, and anybody who's a fire explorer, you know, it, it, it's like the biggest tease. It is being a fire. Explorer. I did it too, bro. It, when I was fourteen, like, it's like being a fourteen-year-old kid with a Playboy. Yeah. That, that, that's what it's like, and you know, <laughs> you want to touch it, but you can't. Right. And you know when you. When you get, you know, you go to fire one and you get cleared or whatever it is and you get, you know, you know, 
for Collinswood, you had to go through their new man training, go to Fire One, then go through another portion of training to get actually cleared and deemed interior firefighter, and it was uh, it was awesome. I mean, there's no there's no you know ifs and buts about it, and yeah. I, I had a lot of fun. And that, I, I actually worked for Public Works at the time, so you know you used to be able go to leave for fire. For fire. So, so yeah. that was uh, that was like the added bonus. Yeah. You know, that was my driving force of wanting to work at Public Works, not to you know I was like oh it's great. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was like being a career fireman. <laughs> Basically, you get to yeah, get, you go to yeah, fires. Yeah, I mean, you drop whatever you're doing yeah. and go. So it was cool. That's good. So, tell me a little bit more about Collingswood. What was that like for you to be in the fire department with your dad? I mean, you're so my dad was my, my dad happened to retire uh, right before I got involved in it. It was probably a year after is when they did all that. That's maybe awesome. like two years. Well, he you know, he did his time, and yeah. you know, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, everyone look at my dad had me when he was 45 years old and my mom was 43. So, uh, you know, they were in retirement mood. So, right, right. you know, my dad just, he didn't really get involved that much. He kind of just let me on my path. And, you know, that was how I started out. And I thought, well, I got to be like my dad. And I quickly realized, well, I'm not my dad. So, right. well, not quickly. It took a couple of years to realize that, that that's not who I am. You know, I got to kind of forge my own, my own path if I want to do this. But it was cool. It was nostalgic. It, you know, it was a lot to live up to right you know there, there, there's definitely that there's definitely that pressure for legacy firefighters you know and i see it on my job but a lot of guys come in and their dads are you know i work with a kid in my company his dad's a battalion chief you know there's there's a legacy there and but you know it's the best advice i always give to that is stop trying to be your dad or, yeah, or your uncle yourself. or your grandfather just yeah. be yourself and you know but don't let down that name it's on the yeah. back code you know so but you it know was cool. i'm glad you said that because that's something you said to me a while back when we first met and it, it always it always stuck with me, and, and you're absolutely right. When you're talking about your father, we were in Jackson, and we were sitting there waiting for, you know. I don't have the jacket on. And you had the, you had your dad's jacket yeah. on. It was like an old school, you know, uh, jacket. It's a wool, yeah, yeah wool it, from it, the 60s. So I knew right away, like, I didn't even know you, bro, but when I saw the jacket, I'm like, this dude's legit. Because when you wear something like that, it, it, it means more than just the jacket. It means I like, like vintage clothing. That's it's why. awesome, bro. Like, so I saw that, my God, this is a good cat, you know. And then one of the things you said to me was, uh, I don't know if you remember this, but I do. You said the name on the back of your coat means everything. It well, both your your last name and your department name right. does. So, it? so you know, I always you know, I always tell young guys that same thing when I talk to them, and I said that that's the advice I give because you're right. That is important, man. It is, and you know, you got to remember, you, you always remember your roots. It, 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 everybody started out some way, mm-hmm. and you know, in this in this in this you know career, whether it's career volunteer, but you know, you're I'm, and nobody came into this being the best at it you know you unfortunately a lot of this is trial by error you got to fall on your face a, a few a times. Bunch of times yeah you got to fall on your a face a few times. times and if you're not making mistakes you know you're not going to learn and you're, if you're not making mistakes you're really not doing the job sure you're not going to learn <laughs> i mean it <laughs> you know? nothing goes perfect and no. you got to you know you got to this, this job this job is all fighting fire is all about adapting mm, absolutely so you you're winning collingswood then Tell me what it was like when they punch your ticket and you get hired as a firefighter in, in Camden. What well, was I got like? hired in the career staff in Collins, but I was there for about four years. Um, and, you know, it, it was a good job. It just wasn't for me. And I, I wanted to be a city farm, and I did. And I took a bunch of tests. Um, do you think that had a lot to do when you were a kid? Oh, there's no doubt about it. From, 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 from riding, those fires? Oh, my yeah. God, there's no doubt about it. And I buffed them even, you know, up until, the you know, the, the week I started for the academy, I was buffing them. I just, you know... There's just something about it. Uh, you know, I, I kind of put all my – I definitely took a bunch of tests, uh, but I put all my eggs in one basket. For New Jersey Civil Service, anybody knows you have to because yeah. you got you got to declare residency. So uh, I moved to Camden when I actually uh, – we you know, we, we got it. We got our first place there when we were, like, seniors in high school. And, uh, you know, because you got to be a city resident. We wanted to live there, and uh, we had a good time. It was a party house, no doubt about it. Um, and, you know, we went there, and uh, when I got hired, I um, it was great. It was – it was surreal. It kind of didn't hit me until probably like a couple weeks into the academy, but um, you know, I I, uh, I actually went out of Collinsville with a working fire. And, nice. Yeah, what it was, a nice way. Now you it was, it was present, yeah, man. it was cool. And then um, I uh, you know started the academy, and you know we were there for twelve weeks, and that was that. Tell tell our viewers, man. Like, what was it like for you getting your your badge pin, man? Like, what what would that mean to you? It was. Uh, so funny story. Uh, at the time, my line number in Collingswood was three three six, and I got handed. We got our badges before the ceremony, and I got three three five. And I asked the deputy chief, 
like an idiot uh, probe. He went up to the deputy chief. I'm like, hey, chief, <laughs> can I switch? And he went up beside of me and down the other. Yeah, so I, I tried to get 336 for like the nostalgia to keep the numbers together or whatever. It didn't work out. But uh, no, so it was cool, man. You know, my dad was there and, um, you know, uh, he didn't have his uniform on. He doesn't, he, he doesn't, you know, he's retired. He's, right. that's, how, that's how he, he rolls with that. But, um, you know, it, it was cool. Um, you know, it was a cool, it was definitely one of the things where you don't remember, you know, it was yeah, cool. Yeah. And, and I got a picture picture hangs in my parents house so yeah you never forget something like no like, absolutely not like it that. was you know getting promoted was all the more better you know uh and it was it was very cool but yeah so tell, tell me what it's like man you're in camden you're in the city you know you're, we own these jobs like get, bring me yeah. something through some of these experiences so truth be told i almost quit the camden fire department my first year um i had a very tough time transitioning from the suburbs to city and um, it wasn't tool. So we did rotations our first year. We, you know, you, everybody did two engines and a ladder. And then at the end, you could uh, put a transfer in for a spot. So I started an engine, went to a ladder. And it wasn't until I landed to my third rotation, which was um, eight months into my, pro, you know, on the street, is when I, you know, I finally, um, I, I got teamed up with a captain that really um, br- was able to break me down and kind of shake me of some of the things I've learned or thought I knew. Because I went there thinking, I'm like, I got this. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, I've been a fireman. I've been waiting for this my entire life. And it just, the pace, the fast pace, and uh, the senior guys on the job, the captains, battalion chiefs, the deputy chiefs, I mean, there was so much raw street experience. It was almost sometimes overwhelming to be around. Like, you felt, you know, like, you're, like, in the presence of, like, these giants. Right. And, um... You know, it wasn't until I got that third rotation where I was able to have somebody, you know, really break me down and build me back up that, you know, I was like, okay, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I feel better. You know, I, it was a lot of, uh, a lot of second guessing yourself and the first, first year is rough. And I think for anybody who's a probie, you know, and you're, you know, you're in a department that you're, you know, maybe you wanted to work in or you go to or whatever it is, you know, that first year can be rough and, you know, you should be uncomfortable as a probie. I, I think as a new guy, it's good. Absolutely, 100%. It, it, it's good if you're comfortable. You know, it, it's usually your attitude is probably wrong and, you know, you, you're going to fail. But, you know, that un- that uncomfort was something that uh, I thought I I thought I shouldn't have. And then when I realized I should have it, I was like, okay. And I was able to, to, to really dig in and, you know, learn, learn be taught the job by you know, some, some really great people. Do you find yourself doing that now as a captain? Are you, are you doing that to others? I try really hard to break down academy training, uh, because it's so black and white when firefighting is so gray. So, you know, it it is something I try to work on. And, you know, I, I, as a captain, I have had many, I mean, over a dozen probationary firefighters assigned to me and um, yeah, you know, and, and they rotate through whatever, but, you know, the time I spend with them, it's, you know, I just try to work on basic skills, you know, more more confidence building. Because I, I, I remember how I, I was extremely unconfident that first year. I was second-guessing myself after every fire, after every fire, after every fire. And, you know, I was really beating myself up. And it's great to self-reflect and have personal accountability, but it's another thing to, like, beat yourself up to the point right. where like you know you don't feel comfortable yeah, yeah. so that, that's no good I, I think it's good to you know take a, a young firefighter especially at the academy and you know break down their academy training because it's not it's nothing like real world right and build them back up to the reality of their situation whatever it is because you know whether it's an engine a ladder whether in the academy they were learned, they were in a company with four firefighters but on reality they might have three so right. you know it, it's it's all about reality to me and after you know a young guy once you start catching that work it automatically will start to build your confidence will oh, build yeah. your morale like, it was i was i was doing well as a young firefighter and i had definitely had life by the balls that's good yeah that, and that's the good thing about like just remember your past man never forget those humble beginnings and you know, it's a it's a good thing now i mean you're like kind of a big deal now man I don't so know about that i just i'm so just me man I, it's, I don't it's cool i know and that's all the part of the I, humble I part but the good thing is that there's guys that usually young guys uh, and gals getting on the job right now, who you ha- you have their ear, you are an influence with them, and, and that's a powerful thing, it, though, because you can go. It is very powerful. It, it's a responsibility that I take serious. Um, right. My wife's walking around here; she'll even attest that sometimes I take it too serious because, you know, I, I do answer every message, every email. I try to get people the best information. If I don't it's know daunting. it, it's a if daunting. If I don't test. know it, I try to find somebody that does know it, right. and you know. 
get what they say and 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 give it to that person. So it, it's it's hard. It, it's 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 definitely you know I had you know it is what it is. Yeah. Well, listen. That, that's again. I think those are the important things about the fire service, and you clearly get that. You got that from your father. You got that from your your start in Collingswood. You got it from your start in Camden. Uh, and you know, one of the cool things is Ray and I were able to get a. a, a a look inside your house and you showed us some of your memorabilia and the things that mean things to you. Bro, when you were being interviewed by Ray and I was standing there watching it, I could see. You can't, you know, like, you, know, you can't fake some things, you know. You could see the passion that you have for the fire service, I, what it means. I can definitely, and maybe like everybody, you know, I can get firehoused out and you get a break from the firehouse and, uh, you know, the, the BS runs and whatever. That's why I bought a boat. Yeah, well, I can't, I don't, I don't think we got this pool here. That's our, that's our boat. But, um, it's always funny. Like, I'm like, I need to break. I need, I need some days off right. and I'll, I'll get a day off or I'll take a week off. But you always want to go back, right? On that week off, I'm, I'm buying fire helmets or talking yeah. to firemen <laughs> or writing posts or getting pictures right. or, you know, like, I, I mean, I, all my three days off, I'm, I'm literally... It's in your DNA, bro. I'm you're, just taking pictures of buildings. You're shot. I just can't... Yeah, yeah. so I, it's it's kind of funny, but, like, just not being in the firehouse, I guess, is the break. I don't know. Tell tell us what the kitchen table means to you. What's the firehouse kitchen table mean? But I want you... It's a two-part question, right? So give me the firehouse kitchen table experience as a firefighter, and then I want you to give it to me as a fire captain. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> as, a, as a firefighter, so the kitchen table... Not in everybody's firehouse is the spot to talk. Maybe they got another spot. So we'll just call it the spot because, you know, in a lot of places, like, you know, um, like I can tell you right now, uh, I work at fire headquarters, engine one. We sit around and smoke cigars in the circle. So that's like our kitchen table at times. So wherever your spot is. We have like, Ray, what was like a workbench? Yeah, wherever, wherever <laughs> your spot like is where, where, where you shoot this shit. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I think, I, I think as, um, as a fireman, it's a place where maybe you can feel a little more equal in wherever you're at in your career and maybe freely bounce some things off people or get involved in conversations that maybe in a different place or time you wouldn't be able to get involved in. Um, you know, it's, I always enjoyed, you know, the after fire talk and, you know, even the next tour you come in and you're still talking about that fire or, you know, something happened, but I think it's a place to be yourself and let loose. You know, like it's okay to, right. to to let loose there a little bit and let people see a side of you that maybe you don't want them to see or share some laughs. I, I think it's a great place to break balls too. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's it, whatever it is. I mean, breaking balls to me is extremely healthy, and you know, but you got to be able to you got to be able to um, take it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you have to be able to dish it and take it at um, the same time. But to but me. Do- Okay. Do, do you find yourself, you know, not being able to ask someone else in your life the questions that you ask those guys at that kitchen table? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's sometimes it's your judge and jury. It's your, my air conditioner just broke. I mean, we were talking about that for like 20 minutes trying to troubleshoot that with pictures <laughs> my wife sending me. And, right, it's awesome, man. Yeah, so, you know, it, it, there, there, there are plumbing conversations. Mm-hmm. People, I've seen people draw full additions for houses, um, you know, things of that nature. So, you know, we're... we're it's a little bit of everything happens. It's just not firefighting stuff. Sometimes right. it's just a place where, you know, it's a decompression. That's the and beauty of it. It is. And you know? sometimes you need to, you need that, that to happen. And, you know, there's a, you know, relationship advice, whatever, financial advice, right? whatever. And, and, and so the firemen are probably the worst people to give relationship advice oh, or yeah. financial advice. Yeah, probably 100%, ever. <laughs> but they all do. I mean, or so it's, and what works for one guy might work for another. Right. So that's how it is. But, you know, as a captain, I realized early on that that really wasn't my place to be for a lot of, a lot of reasons. And I, I always say this, and, uh, you know, if you're in a relationship with a significant other, I, I would guarantee the significant other is the person you probably bitch about the most in your life or get mad about. And I think it's very healthy for a relationship. And I think in the firehouse, I think it's very healthy for a company officer to give their uh, personnel their space so they can bitch about you. You know, it's funny, Bobby, man. I, I've, you know, you know, I've interviewed a bunch of people, man, and um, I, I, deputy chiefs, chiefs, captains, lieutenants, all that. And uh, a deputy chief once said to me, he says, the kitchen table, he goes, I never wear my uniform shirt in the kitchen table. He goes, I always wear a T-shirt. He goes, when I'm in there, I'm one of the guys. I'm one of the guys, but I know that at some point I have to leave. Sure. I, I give it a little bit of space, a little bit of time, and at some point I leave because they have to talk about me. 
they have to bitch about me. They 100%. have to, it, you know, it, it's healthy. Yeah, it, it, it goes to a healthy relationship, and you got, you know, that relationship is just like a marriage, or you know, a bond, you know, whatever you have, or being a parent, or whatever right. it is. You know, you take it serious. So, you know, I, I always, um, I like to cook. I love to cook. It's one I of my suck. one Ugh. of my one of my jams, and you know, we're gonna cook and eat after this. So. You know, I, I cooked lunch and dinner yesterday at work, and, um, you know, it felt good to get back in the rotation. And, uh, you know, as soon as I was done eating, I was gone. That's actually not true. J- Ray, what do I cook at work? Breakfast. Yeah, what, though? Eggs. Eggs. I make eggs. That's about it, though. But you can screw up eggs. So. <laughs> he said that's about it. No, that's about it. That's true. Uh, it, and it, toast. It's... it's <laughs> I, I think, you know, the, those areas of the firehouse, wherever it is, kitchen, you know, workbench, you're, you know, you got the patio where you smoke cigars, whatever. It's invaluable. But as a company officer, I think it's good to either, you know, be seen as equal or not be seen at all. Absolutely, man. And, and that's why I asked you that question, because that is one of the things that people ask me. You know, it's funny, Bobby, people who ask me questions about the firehouse culture, almost all aren't firefighters. It's so bizarre. Like, I'll get messages all the time on Instagram or email even, and I'll say, hey, you know, what what is the firehouse culture all about? Why is it that, what is this kitchen table thing all about? And I try to explain to it, but, you know, it's great that I can explain it, but it's also great when I can talk to guys like you. Well, you got to be able to see it and live it. And exactly. You gotta, it's hard you know, to explain. It's, it's tough being a company officer, you know, because you do have responsibilities and, you know, sometimes you got to carry out things that you don't believe in yourself, but... It's coming down the from mission. The, you gotta yeah, carry it's the coming mission. from the ivory tower, so you got. It's do a hard it. transition, man. Being a boss because you want to, you have to support your, your members, and at the same time, you have to support administration. So you, it's a it's a fine balance. It's like a juggling act. It's definitely an interesting dynamic and something that you know. I don't think any class or anything that you do prepares you for it. It just kind of just you kind of kind of you got to find your own way. Yeah. If that makes sense. So I heard this story about you getting hurt on the job, bro. Why don't you bring me? Bring me into that. Um, yeah, so it was uh, January 2018. Uh, I, I, I suffered a traumatic head injury at work. I, I took a four-inch coupling uh, to the back of my head. Uh, I was wearing that helmet. I remember seeing the helmet fly off. And um, I was actually draining hose, and the coupling was, like, right above my butt, and it got uh, charged oh, and man. shot up and got me. So, uh, yeah, I was. it was uh, – I, I ended up um, – it knocked me out. I don't remember being knocked out. Um, when I came to – I was my eyes were closed, and when I opened them, it, everything was blurry, and so I had a skewed vision. I wouldn't say blindness because I guess blindness is you know pitch black, right? But I, everything was blurry probably you know till that evening. Wow, that's so, scary, man. Yeah, it was it was definitely uh, an interesting thing that I you know uh, uh, something experience that I went through that's definitely interesting. You know, I kind of wish I broke my arm because like at least I know what it is. But you know, to this day, like. I got like 13 pairs of sunglasses. I got lights. I got like little Me too. things. I have to wear some. I, I actually caught some heat on it about wearing sunglasses, you know, <laughs> on the show. But, you know, I've unfortunately in my eyes, I need like sunglasses because my eyes are sensitive. I'm the same way. I mean, I, I have different ones and sometimes they plateau and I got to get new ones. And, you know, it was definitely something where, you, you know, you learn a lot about uh, people. You learn a lot about the job. You learn a lot about who your friends are. Um, you know, you know, shout out to my wife. She's literally the strongest person I know. She was seven months pregnant and just, uh, was a rock. Slept in that, you know, hospital room. Took care of me. Made sure because I, you know, I was a mess. I couldn't really. I wasn't paralyzed, but I couldn't walk. I, I couldn't, you know, put weight on my body. It was T- you know. talk talk about the not not the physical, you know, ramifications of that injury, but talk about mentally what it was doing to you, man. Because Fr- frustrating the shit out of me because yeah. I just couldn't. I couldn't be me, and I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't work. You know, in my mind, I'm like, I'll be at work next week. You know, I was out for four months. Right. You know, so it, it's. It's and you never work that long takes its hold on you, man. Well, I, it, it, well, geez, it, it it's just you know I was in a rehab hospital, then I was in day rehab, and you know you're in there with people that have severe injuries, and you know I'm like I don't even know why I'm here. I can walk, and but you know then again I, I would hit a setback, extreme setback, and it would like you know I, I would be I'm an emotional person. People that know me, I, I would be definitely extremely emotional about the setback, thinking like oh my gosh. You know what, what? What the hell am I gonna do? At the time, I was 35 years old, and I'm, what am I'm, what am I gonna be retired? Like, what, yeah. what the hell am I gonna do? I don't know anything else. So, you know, it, it's uh, scary. It, it, scare? I, I I would say it's just it's not really fear. It's just like um, unanswered questions that yeah. you can't get. Well, it's a fear to. of the unknown, bro. Yeah. I, I again, I would I would never say fear because I, I kind of like I try I try to I try to you know. Uh, 
equate things or put things in perspective. So it was more just like an unknown, like, and me trying to figure it out. Yeah. And it was like frustrating. I felt like I was on a hamster wheel at times. Yeah. I can imagine that. Yeah. yeah it's so, but it's, tough. It, it, it's Especially definitely when you're active. It's definitely something that, um, some very good things did come of it. Uh, I met a lot of great people. Um, you know, it, it uh, but it did definitely sparked uh, my my side thing that I did yeah, here. That, yeah. that, that that's how that's how that basically started. Well, that, that literally my next question. So we after fire tactics uh, had. <laughs> so um, I was teaching at the the uh, my local fire academy, and I was there uh, a lot. I was you know in the beginning, and then um, as my kids got older and got in activities on the weekend, I couldn't always be there, and uh, you know some classes I'd pick up and here and there and um i just didn't uh i didn't agree with some of the teachings of the book and i just felt like some of the programs you know not taking a shot at them just weren't as realistic and you know oh you can't do this well i just did it yesterday at work why can't i show it that type of thing so you know i kind of uh faded away from there a little bit and um you know obviously my kids got a little older and it was busy and i just couldn't put the time in i wanted to you know, teaching and it was, uh, frustrating to me. So, cause I did, I really enjoyed teaching in, uh, you know, especially fire one. I loved teaching fire one. I, I miss it greatly. Um, so I got hurt and I had my Instagram and I was able to, uh, be out in the streets and take pictures and I'd post a picture and say of a door and Hey, cut, attack the door this way or you know make sure halligan's flipped that way or whatever and i was just like my wife's like what do you like i would post like on a monday or tuesday or wednesday and she's like you should just post like once a week i was like okay she's like you should do it on tuesday i was like and call tuesday for tactics i was like okay <laughs> so that's how that started isn't it so cool like someone else in a firefighter picks up on you know so that's how that started and then uh i was doing that and then she's like you got a hashtag i'm like what's a hashtag <laughs> <laughs> so I literally Googled. I didn't know either. I Googled some hashtags. <laughs> and so she's like texting me to do this. So I did it. And she meant like hashtag like fire, fireman, firefighter. Well, I just came up with Acker Fire Tactics. And that's literally how this whole thing started. I was lecturing a little bit before that on my own. I did a couple conferences and all, um, you know, to be able to say some things that I say uncensored and be able to, uh, you know, give my passion a little bit when I have worry about like, uh, getting in trouble for cursing. Uh, cause I do have a foul mouth. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, I always give a disclaimer before I teach that I am going to curse. Uh, so yeah, that's basically how it started. And I really haven't looked back. It was just kind of, uh, as I keep going, uh, you know, it's morphed into what it's morphed in. I put out my, uh, my first year of Tuesdays with tactics. I was able to put them in a, in a book and, uh, get them out. Last year, yep. um, I have the second year coming out. COVID's obviously awesome book. Screwed, I loved it. Screw, I appreciate it. It's yeah. obviously screwed it up. So we got it. We're working on our uh, our second volume right now. Awesome. And um, you know, it's looking it's, back at this. Did, did you ever think this was going to be a, a in thing? A million like million years, if, an actual brand. If you told me, I would have laughed at you. Because to be honest with you, when I was right before I got hurt, I was thinking about. Uh, opening up like a side business of, of like doing trees like cutting trees down because I did it before right. and I was like yeah, I can do that you know I was like looking at something to just you know uh, yeah. you know make a little extra scratch and you know maybe my wife would work for me and it would be cool and whatever and then I got hurt and it kind of just sidelined me and uh, you know I would just see some stuff on the internet that I was like that's that's not how it should be going and it just gets frustrated and then you know you put yourself out there mm-hmm. And, and you, you open know, yourself up to all kinds of oh, screen. Man, I, I know, you know all about it, bro. It's, 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 uh, you know, it's, all I do is talk to people, and I, you know, it's 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 interesting how everybody yeah. wants to come at you, and yeah. you know, everybody knows you, and you know, who you've never even met before in your entire life. And unfortunately, you know. a lot of that is jealousy too, bro. If people start to see that you're doing uh, well in life, you know, it, it is what it is. I don't. I it don't, happens. I'm telling you. I'm, I, I don't let it bother. I don't. Oh, well, it's good. I brush it away. You know, yeah. it, I just my my goal is to try to make the fire service a better place through my experience. If I can, you are. And, that, and that's that's my, like, I, I, I enjoy when I do teach my classes or build my classes. I usually build my classes around mistakes that I've made and, you know, show people that, you know, it's okay to make a mistake. But it's it, it's it's not the mistake you make. It's how you recover from it. Bro, I'll tell you exactly why your, your class is successful. I can tell you why people want to take your classes over and over and again when they've already seen it. And that's because, I'll tell you why. One, it's real. It's completely real. 
you know, you put all, everything you have into it, your passion, your love for the job, you, you know, your love for your brother firefighter. I mean, that all that shit, again, you can't fake that. That's real. So that's that. Then you're talking from experience. And you're not afraid to say, hey, guess what? I screwed this up. I won't do that again. Or, hey, I, I made a mistake here and I learned from it. And this is why I do it this way. People need to hear that. And then the other part is you curse. <laughs> now, that, for one, all kidding aside, when you curse, it, it first of all, it gets people's attention, right? That's the first thing. So they snap up. They go, what just happened? And then they're hearing your personal experiences and you're giving them tricks to save their lives, man. Like, you couldn't give a better gift to anybody ever in the fire service but say, hey, if you do this or you watch that or you're looking at building instruction, which you're huge with, all right, if, if you're doing that, it's real. I know, I don't I don't mean to curse. I, I just want everybody to know that like it's not like my like I'm that's not my shtick. I, I, I honestly sometimes don't even. It, it's the passion part. My, of it. my wife yells at me yeah. all the time for curse. I'm like I cursed. I don't even know what I did. But you know <laughs> it's, it's a passion. I do. I I can get on a tangent and go left to right. But yeah, I and I appreciate that. You know it, it is something that we're you know I, I found a platform for people to be able to you know learn from my experience, good or bad. And um, you know I I definitely was. Uh, I definitely was a person who maybe, you know, maybe 10 years ago, if you met me, you probably wouldn't, maybe you wouldn't have liked me or, you know, you know, maybe I wasn't the best voice for the fire service back then, but, you know, it, it, you definitely evolve in your life and your career, you know, and I just, I kind of saw a window and what, the, what I, th my personal opinion with the fire service is missing and I thought maybe I had something to offer to it and, you know, here I am two, year, two years later, you know, we're, we're, we're getting ready to uh, launch some pretty big things with Acro Fire Tactics. And, uh, yeah, we're super, super excited to see that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something where, you know, I didn't kind of let, didn't let the COVID slow us down. I, I kind of used it as a time to, uh, to build. So, um, you know, we're, we're uh, you know, we're, we're, you're going to see uh, not only lecture, but, you know, we're fully insured for hands-on uh, fire training awesome. and, and, and we're Dude. we're getting ready to take it to the next level so and we're definitely looking forward to that and we'll obviously probably be part of that i mean that's just you know it's awesome and the, one, the, the, the one thing that's awesome about um this whole thing and you know ray and i have talked about this too the relationships you you, you meet you make on something like instagram yeah it's, it's, it's crazy it right funny, yeah. so I'm, I'm older i'm 45 years old man so like you know this stuff was kind of new to ray me. and i were saying you look 50 earlier it's crazy right, it's you're 45 he would say something like that he's mean so, I look back at the, you know, when I was first started getting into this thing, I thought, man, if only, like, if 50 people watched that one episode, my first episode, that'd be cool. I was happy with that. I never thought it would be like what it is now, but what's amazing is the relationships you make on Instagram. Sure, like, yeah. I awesome mean, you, people. You mean, I, it's funny that a lot of people from Jersey, <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of Jersey people that, that have, you know, the, the Instagram thing, so I feel like all the Jersey people know each other now, <laughs> so that's kind of cool when we're in Wildwood, yeah. you know, we kind of hang out or whatever, but uh, yeah, it's, it is cool. The people I've met. Uh, the places I've gone, yeah. I mean, I, right before COVID, I was in Boise, Idaho, and you know, with um, you know Drew from Fire Reviews and um, you know good Blake dude. from Next Wrong, yeah. we All were, good we people, were out man. there, and it was it was just really cool. I just I, I was looking at these picturesque mountains, and I'm like, I can't believe this is where this, you work. Yeah. This brought me here. <laughs> I just right, it, it was amazing, and the the, the guys uh, and gals that I met out there, amazing, it was just, right? Yeah, I love. I love doing what I'm doing, and uh, I never thought that I would be. Yeah. The, I never thought in a million. Hundred percent, bro. It's never so awesome, and it's years. it's really nice to see over the last few years your progression, and then to see you grow, man. It, it's it's awesome. It's you know I, again I, I don't know I don't know the rhyme or reason I I am very calculated with some of the stuff I do, uh, and the pictures I take and things of that nature, but uh, you know I, I don't I kind of suck at social media, so I try to. Uh, you know, try to do the best I can, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's been, uh, I'm very, very, very humbled of, of all the support and, uh, you know, the people reaching out and people, um, you know, again, supporting, you know, us and what we do and, uh, yeah, no doubt. you know, again, we, 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 we're, we're, we have not let off the gas one bit. We it's have awesome. some awesome, awesome stuff coming. It's, it's so cool, man. You, you talked about that. I was in, um, Sugar Creek, Indiana. Like I, what am I doing in Sugar Creek, yeah, Indiana? I don't know where right that's now. at, yeah. So, um, you know, I was there with the guys from Axe Head Thread and great guys, man, Sugar Creek Fire Department. And, and, you know, as soon as I got there, welcomed me like family. Yeah. And, and it's amazing that that relationship was built on Instagram. Sure. Like, if not for... Yeah, I mean, I, it, again, that's the times we live in. So, yeah. especially now with, uh, you know, everybody isolating and all. You oh, know, yeah. You're it's... doing more technical or talking, texting and things of that nature to, to communicate but yeah it is zoom meetings and zoom and I, totally know, different time of the time yeah of life. zoom is uh i mean we we brought that we brought the premium package to zoom you know right away to i didn't want to um because i did have some lectures 
scheduled. Right. And I felt bad, so you know, we 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 found a way to make it work. For, oh, that's great to get some people going. You know, we've we've ran a few open enrollment lectures, um, and then we have. Uh, we, I was able to do a couple uh, fire departments via Zoom. So, oh, nice. Yeah. That's good. At least you got to keep it going, man. You don't want to lose your momentum. I didn't. Sure. Well, I didn't want. It's not about me. It's about everybody else. Like I don't yeah. want people to get stale. Like don't, don't, don't fall into the rut. Use this time to to recharge or work on something that maybe you didn't know. It's a great time for all know, online uh, training. Yeah, but yeah, it's I mean, awesome. it's, a, it's a great time. You know, I don't know about everybody else, but you know, where I work, it, it seems COVID has slowed us a little bit. So there's a little more downtime in the firehouse, and you know, take that time to to work. You know, bring back in your basic skills and work on some things because, you know your basic skills are the things that are going to carry you through any incident that you go through, you know. Bro, before I let you off the hook here, man, what is it about this building construction? <laughs> like, what's the deal with this? Because it's huge for you. It's funny. I, I never thought in a, in a million years it would be. I, I I got a D in junior college fire service building construction. It was actually a D minus. I think I had the D minus <laughs> came because I cut a piece of... Uh, cork board pre and peg cork board from a cold storage vacant cold storage warehouse in Camden and gave it to the instructor and he was like thank you for this so I'll give you the I'll give you the yeah mind. I got the grade like I was getting an F and no no pun intended to the instructor he was a very knowledgeable person and he gave great information at the time I just don't think my mind was you know ready to handle it and and I think every class prior to that one I was probably explained something different in each one so when I came time to study for promotional exam, I realized that building instruction was my weakest point. And I was like, fuck, like, I got to learn this shit. I got to so, hit this hard. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of just self-taught myself. And then I would then field questions at work. I'd field questions from other people. Then other people would be like, just ask him. And then my phone's ringing and I'm asking. And, I, you know, I take a lot of pictures of buildings. Yeah, well, that's why I'm asking. Cause it's it's kind of my, my thing to do. Um, you know, I, I probably spend... On my three days off, I probably dedicate one afternoon to uh, either I, I I'll either go to Camden, um, I'll go into Philadelphia because we're right we're right here we're literally ten minutes from Philly, and uh, you know I'll get in there and I'll just photograph because you know urban cities have all five types of building instruction and you're able to see it, so and you know sometimes I'll have my kids with me sometimes I won't, and uh, you know I just I get out there and try to just you know teach myself and, and learn it and right. you know try to push it forward but I, I I found a way to kind of explain it and dumb it down and uh, I try to give it to everybody because honest to God you know we're inside a building that can collapse and kill us and fire can do it so you know you should know uh, at least at the bare minimum how it's built how fire travels through it and how it's going to collapse well, and, yeah it's and, and, and you know building instruction and one thing is too not everybody knows it so like you the chief could have a different definition of it. You could have a def- different definition of it. The company also had a different definition of it. Like, nobody's on the same page with it. That's what's... It's actually scary. And, you know, when I... I'm sure when you took Fire 1, it was the thickest chapter in oh, the yeah. book. Now yeah. it's the thinnest. Yeah. That's wild to me. And then some of the information, especially in the Jersey book, and... They beat it into us, Fire 1. I mean, this is 1990... I was 2000. Two. 2000, you know, when I took it. And, you know, even then, they, they, they it was older guys teaching it, but... Even then, I, I was like, I'm not paying attention to shit. Like, I don't. Yeah, because well, you're young, you don't even think about how important it is. Be, I want to be on right. the nozzle, or yeah. like, you know, I want to force a door. And I'm not listening to it, but you know, I, I think it's even more important now. These entry level firefighters, they have to have a basic understanding of the five types. They have to. It's, it's, you know, it, it's. There's no doubt. It could save your life. It could, but it could also make you look like an all star when you got you know, fire extending, and you're able to do something to stop from extending and put the fire out. You know, right. it's, it's, you know, I, I sometimes. Sometimes I get tired of like the life and death things. Yeah. Life. Like, how about it makes us look good to put the fire out? Because we're yeah. there to put the fire out. We're not yeah. fast, we're not, fast we're, as shit too. That'd well, be awesome. you know, you, you roll up and we're not there to make the incident worse. We're there to make it better. So you know, and it also teaches you like fire ground movement. I think is a is a major thing, and it also teaches you movement on the fire ground. Like you know, everybody's going through that door. Well, <laughs> they're going through the wrong door. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to tell them, but like <laughs> they think because it's in the front of the building, that's the that's the way to go. Well, I know it's this way. See you later. I'm going this way. Right. So, you know, it's it, it's one of them things. Also, well, that, that's how how important it is, though. Like the building construction, that man. right there, what you just said is is monumental, man. If that wasn't a reason for anybody to know why you need to know building construction and fire ground operations, is because of that. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And I always tie like a historical thing into it because I'm a big history buff, so I gotta do that. And you know, 
my, I, sometimes I feel bad for my kids because through the isolation, when I get under schoolwork, I'm like, get in the car, like, let's drive around. Yeah. And I'm like showing them stuff and they're like falling asleep. Don't think for a second though, your kids aren't, aren't forgetting that. No, nah, I mean, they're, I mean, I'm sure, but they're like, dad, They'll what, remember what are we all. doing? I'm like, just relax. I gotta get a yeah. picture. So yeah. That's awesome stuff. So listen, man, I, I, you know, before I let you off the hook, man, I just, I always want to know where people's minds are at, bro, especially in the fire service and things, things are going on nowadays. You see that the fire service, it's different, right? It's different than when it was when we started, right? So obviously you're in a position now where you're trying to make it better. You're doing the things that other other guys are doing too to try to make the fire service better for everybody. It's a little easier in 2020 because of all the technology and all these ways to connect with people, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. My question to you is, what are you saying? What is Bobby Eckert saying to this brand new firefighter, male, female, whatever, comes to you and says, uh, thinking about being a firefighter, what are you saying to him? I mean, that's a, it's, a, it's a tough question. Uh, you know, I, I would obviously tell them to, you know, put themselves in a position where they can try to get as much experience as you can. And uh, there are places throughout this country where you can go do that. Uh, you know, I, I think one of the, my biggest regrets in the fire service is I didn't go to a place when I was younger where I could be that live-in oh. firefighter and, you well, know. Well, we said the same thing. Grab, when, grab that experience. Colonial you know, Park? I, 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 if they had something like that when I was young? I, oh. I, I didn't. Around here, they didn't have that, and yeah. we didn't have the Internet, so I didn't really know. Um, you know, I, I, did, I have had the chance of being around some young firefighters. Um, a few of them come to mind where, you know, I, I noticed them teaching their fire one what, and I was like, this kid's got something. And, you know, I just, you know, formed like a relationship with him and just said like, yo, you need to go here because where you're at, you know, not that it's bad, but your, your skill set will match up with this experience very well. So, nice. you know, I think one of the, the number one things I would tell an entry level firefighter is this, this job, firefighting is not for everybody. Mm. It is not for everybody. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a dirty dingy unsafe place where you know it's like when people tell you my mom says be safe at work okay it's impossible it's impossible to be safe impossible. doing an unsafe act right right you, you, and 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 then you got people out there that you know are are you got the human error on the fire ground where you know you can be doing everything right and this dude drops ladder and you're hit and your your yeah. your legs broken so you know it's an unsafe place so you know i think one of the biggest things is for these young firefighters to realize the reality of what they're getting themselves, themselves into 100% and also you know, and I see it with my kids too, you know, technology, video games, all that stuff, you know, th th these kids, you know, I'm not taking a shot at the generation because I do think you can teach mechanical aptitude. I do think you can teach experience. I do think you can create talent in your organization. But just because, it, like, if you hand a kid a tape measure and sh t sh tell him to show you, you know, seven sixteenths, he doesn't know it, that doesn't mean he's an idiot. It means he doesn't know. He doesn't it. know, right? So you got to show them. They're not showing kids in so, school how to use a tape measure. No, you know, I think a lot of people, a lot of young kids, see the grandeur of firefighting on social media, and come into this not knowing that it is the truest form of blue collar work you're ever going to do in your entire life. And it, you know, you literally go from zero to working fire, and you know, you go from a full sleep, relaxing, you know, dreaming of whatever. Two, three minutes later, you're stretching line off the rig, forcing a door, whatever. You know, you, you got to be in a mindset for that as well. So, you know, I would tell the entry level fiver or somebody's looking to get into it is just tell them the reality of what they're getting themselves into because, you know, I do think some people get into this for the wrong reason. I do think people, and 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 then sometimes they get in the wrong reason to find out it's a fit for them. Some people get into the wrong reason to find out it's not a fit for them. Some people get into it for the right reason to find out it's not a fit for them. So, again, it's not for everybody. If it's not for you, it's not for you. Right. The police department's always hiring. That's, I'm just joking. <laughs> it's a joke. Um, no, it, it's, it's, um, it's one of the things where, you know, I, I think I'm a realist and sometimes a little bit too much, but, you know, reality is that of what this job is. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can get hurt. You know, you're going to get hurt. Things aren't going to go wrong. And, you know, the, one of the things that drives me crazy about fire service training is, like, I see all these guys stretching lines in parking lots. And if we go in my house right now, there is no asphalt or concrete inside my house. There is more obstructions in there that can catch your coupling than anything I've ever, you know, yeah. I've seen in my life. And, you know, 
they think because they can stretch it smooth in a parking lot that it's going to work in a fire. And I'll tell you what, you're in a parking lot. You don't have parked cars. You right. don't have street signs. You don't have trees. You don't have any of that All stuff. these obstructions, there, man. I mean, you're, the, the, the Murphy's Law is, is, is just staring right at you every time you go out the door. Yeah, you got a 250-foot pre-connect, and then you're like, why don't... How, why am I only working with 50 feet here? Where's the rest of those? I mean, it, it's crazy, and there's little things you can do. And, right. you know, you see, um, you know, you see these guys stretch these longer lines, you know, they have the, you know, the longer pre-connects mm-hmm. and all. And if you watch them train on it, they don't train in parking lots when they do it. They train in, in an area where they're stretching them. And I think that's why they're very successful at, at, at deploying those loads. Yeah, well, you know, any kind of real life training is what you need to be doing. Well, you got to, you got to try, you got to try to seize the moment of, of, of what you're into, you know, and wherever it is. And if you don't have that, take it to grass. Grass gives friction. Grass gives obstructions. Get out of the parking lots, man. It is not realistic at all. And it drives me absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. <laughs> Sorry. It's fun. No, it's it's right. It's, I'm glad you're saying that stuff because that's what people need to hear. You know, just, that's it's, all part it's of it. It's not realistic fire training at all. Well, th- those are good. Uh, you know, those are good examples to give somebody as a new firefighter. And then you know, we have a lot of those too watching, and, and we always will try to go give them the best advice possible. Um, and it's good have guys like you give your take on that too because it's good. They get to hear what you have to say, and uh, maybe someone will pick up on something you're saying. Yeah, I mean, don't be afraid. Listen, I, I can tell you that the coolest thing I like about this job, uh, well, other than the fire floor, I love going to fires, uh, is I learn something new every day that I go to work, whether it's uh, about hazmat or, uh, you know, whatever, anything emergency related. But, you know, the, even the last fire I was on, I definitely could have done a couple of things differently or better. And, you know, nobody's perfect doing this. Nobody. And you're going to make mistakes. It's about how you recover from your mistake and, you know, don't dwell on it and fix it and train on it. Right. You know, and, you know, I, I wish we did something a little different and we're going to train on it Wednesday when I go to work. We're going to try it and see if it would have worked out. We don't know. You know, it's, but it, it, don't be afraid to, you know, to just self-police yourself and say, you know what, I could have done this better, you know. Nobody's perfect. Nobody. Everybody makes mistakes. From the chief officer on down, you talk to any good street chief, they'll tell you, "Man, I should have done this this way." Yeah. From even where they parked their car, bro. That self reflection is huge. Absolutely. Yeah. It Absolutely. Huge. You know, sometimes you turn the corner, you're like, "Why is the chief parked right there?" And he's not in his car. <laughs> like, what is he doing? Yeah. But like, you know, he. Everybody gets tunnel vision. Everybody's stroke can be out. You know, it, it, it's. You know, I, I, no two incidents are the same. You're going to. Yeah, no doubt. So how, does, how can someone uh, learn about your company? Where do they go to get your information? So right now, uh, we are on Instagram solely. That is getting ready to change. So I'm, I'm Eckert uh, underscore 335. Uh, Instagram made me go public, so I'm, I'm public now. Um, so you can repost all my stuff. Starting June, we will, we will be rolling out EckertFireTactics.com. Nice. So uh, you can reach me uh, or my admin. Admin at EckertFireTactics.com would be the best way to get a hold of uh any, any of us, um, you know, I, I try to t- deter people from direct messaging me. You can hit me up at uh, EckerFireTax at gmail.com. The only reason I say this is because I don't always check my direct messages. Okay. I, I don't. I, I try to, and yeah. I, I feel bad because I'll, like, see somebody message me, like, a week ago, and I didn't get back to them. So, yeah. um, you know, we got another book coming out, uh, Tuesdays for Tactics, Volume 2. Hopefully, God willing, you know, with the, all this shit going on, hopefully it's, it's, it's in July. And uh, we have a, a multitude of uh, hands-on training opportunities coming uh, in the fall. So, well, I I can't thank you enough for uh, having having you come on the show. I've, I've been asking you for a while. I'm glad you did it. And what better background than your backyard with P- <laughs> with PBR? We got paths. You know, you know? It, was, it, it all worked out. Uh, you know, I appreciate everything. You know, you're doing for the fire service and keep it up, man. You know, it's uh, just you know, be yourself. I am. I'm, I'm not going to change for anybody. And I like the fact that uh, we get to meet great people like yourself, man. Likewise, man. It's, you know, I think everybody we, I come across, you know, you, you definitely get to form a relationship with. And, uh, you know, it's funny because, you know, Ray and I talk fairly regularly, especially, you know, about the New Jersey State Civil Service System. So, because we share that burden together, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So, yeah, because that's not broken at all. No. <laughs> no, that's good. Well, listen, everybody, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Um, I know everybody's been looking to see this one. I, I know because I put it out there on Instagram and people were blowing me up asking when we're going to drop this. So it's filmed. It's going out. We're going to edit, put it out to everybody to see. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. <laughs>